from the top of West Mountain in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Good morning, everybody. This is 94.3 FM, the talker, sanity check, Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike. Frank Sorek is in studio. X will be calling in as always. And uh, if you want to blow off a little steam, you want to start your weekend right, that number here is 888-577-4487. 888-577-4487. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. I just have a little story to share. Sometimes the ease of Texas and the things to get done reminds me of why I moved here. And here's an example. And I want to see how, how people in the Northeast, because I remember getting cars inspected in the Northeast and how sometimes it could be such a hassle. Yes. But yesterday I, I had three cars and each one was a five minute trip to the service station. Uh-huh. So a 10 minutes round trip. Uh, every car went through no problem with a total bill of $43.50, taking a total of one and a half hours only, and 30 minutes of that hour was in transporting the cars. So this is the ease of Texas, and I thought $43.50 for three cars and only an hour worth of time getting it done was probably quite remarkable to most Pennsylvanians, Lou. And, and what did they actually check, Michael? Did they did they really check the car to make sure it's safe for you? Or they just say, yep, that looks like a shiny car. Here's a sticker. You know what? And that's a great question. But they actually took the car for a test ride. Each one got a test ride. Each one. <laughs> but they didn't got... take mine for test drives. <laughs> well, They'd have to push yours yeah, up well, onto the lift. It's it, depending on what the car looks of whether their liability insurance is paid up or not. But you know, but certainly mine are relatively new cars. But they they get underneath the hood. They check the tires. They it looks like they check the brakes. So it doesn't look like they did anything any less than they do here. Oh, the only difference is. You ever notice sometimes when you go to get your car inspected, they find things that really aren't a problem, just a tack on the bill? And that was one thing I didn't see here in Texas. So, you know, is that everywhere in Texas? I don't know. But my personal experience was very good, very positive, quick. They were pleasant, in and out, and then uh, we were done. So I thought I was going to get maybe one car inspected for about 50 bucks, and I got All three. time for three for $43.50. All right. So, what? What allows us to do is is really put more time and money in our pocket when it comes to getting cars inspected. And and that may be all well and good, but understand <laughs> here in Pennsylvania, we, we believe that you get what you pay for. <laughs> and, and obviously, you're not paying for corruption down there. We are. So that's why we pay $50 per car. You pay 50 for three. Now, wait a minute. Well, right. uh, and, and I want to remind our listeners, though, well, as you guys are bragging on Texas and talking about Pennsylvania... No inspection beats the Montana inspection. That is correct. I met a young man, Lou, probably from your neck of the woods in Montana, and he said, we don't need inspections anymore. That is correct. Forever. <laughs> you, you and, don't. And he said, that, that is and, true. And, and that is the way it is out there, folks. You there don't is need them no in inspection. Florida. Yeah, you don't need them in Florida either. My, my wife keeps telling me we need to move back to Florida and no inspection is needed. And, and, and my response is, did you see some of the clunkers on the road down there? <laughs> All good, Michael. All good. But well, once again, I think it, your it point take, is... Well, we want to take away the clunkers, too, Lou, and jump right right into the new boxes for the Independent Gazette paper. Ooh. Ooh yeah. I mean, Have you seen they, those yet? They, they would pass inspection without even having to go to the garage if they had wheels on them. Well, thank they you, are. Michael. <laughs> they're, they're looking good, huh? They are looking good. They are shiny. They're a nice blue color, and it's really, really hard to notice. And I did notice, which was very smart, a nice picture of one that you sent me with, uh, if you're looking looking closely, there's a chain on the back of it, chain to the bike rack. I think I thought that was very prudent of you. Well, uh, well, that was Mr. Sorek and Mr. DiLiberto. I mean, they were were in charge charge of Wilkes-Barre security. Right. Well, well, that's at our intermodal center. We wanted to make sure the independent Gazette boxes didn't wind up at a recycling center near you. Well, you know, Frank, what, what I liked about it is the fact I noticed the chain wasn't just any type of chain. That was a nice yellow coated chain, which went along with the blue box, and it almost looked like you had school spirit with the colors of the Myers Mohawks. And I thought that was ingenious of you, Frank. Well, the, the blue is a little off. It needed to be a more royal blue to, to be the Myers Mohawks colors, but yeah. Well, I'm glad you thought I mean, of that, Frank. <laughs> yeah. Who knew? I, I just had some chain laying around in my truck and thought, that'll work. There you go. It's been a, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead, Michael. No, no, I was just wondering where he got the chain from, if that was something that he borrowed from the Wilkes-Barre um, taxpayer. 
No, no, no. That was uh, from Soric Properties. That's where that came from. Soric Properties. Talking about the Wilkes-Barre uh, taxpayers. Uh, Frank, you had a rally this week. We did. We we had a, a rally just yesterday in front of Eddie Day Pashinsky's Wilkes-Barre office. Mr. Pashinsky was there, uh, peered out the window at one point, but refused to come out and, and address us. Really? He did. In fact, uh, my wife, who had some some uh, legislation that she's pr- trying to get on the books regarding uh, Megan's Law and, and uh, children and youth, things like that, of that nature, and she wanted to go in and speak with Mr. Pashinsky, uh, his uh, sphinx to police at the front desk said, you'll need to make an appointment. My wife said, great, uh, open your appointment book. I'm happy to make an appointment while I'm here. And, and she responded with, the man who makes the appointments is out to lunch. This was at 3 p.m. We had been in front of his office since one nobody came in or out except for the reporter that's really pretty crazy you're talking about children and youth i did want to michael uh bruce levine was scheduled to be in studio with us today he's just feeling under the weather a little bit and uh i think we'll have him in next week but he is going to be calling in and one of the things that we we want to talk about in in the uh second segment or actually third segment of our, our show today is how people can get engaged and how do we stay vigilant and and all those other things. But I find it incredible that our representative... I mean, you guys weren't rowdy, or I mean, was oh, it? No. I mean, was it was an it antagonistic was a, uh, no, rally? No, it was or? a peaceful gathering. About 20, uh, 20 or so people out front holding signs that say "End Property Taxes Now," uh, support HB SB seventy six. Uh, we also had signs uh, that were very similar that said uh, "End Property Taxes Now" by electing Betsy Summers in place uh, of Eddie Day. No, uh, uh, Betsy is running against Eddie Day. She is. She's the Libertarian candidate. She's the only opposition to Eddie who has adamantly refuted this bill and said that he will not support HB 76. Except for yesterday when he saw Betsy's signs, he did take a little different (laughs) approach and said, you know what, I really would like this bill to pass, but it's just so flawed. Uh, Really? And and my response was, then fix it. So now he he plans to fix it. So here comes the tap dance, Michael. (laughs) The Texas two-step. There's one of our legislators again, once again, doing the Texas two-step yeah. down there, and uh, and and certainly the three-card Monty, as we say. Exactly. All of a sudden, everything is going to be fine. And and once again, I want to point out, if you want the good old boy system, you could you could probably vote for Eddie Day, and I'm sure uh, the good old boy system will be well intact, right. as as many others up here. So, we, but we, if you want to end, end the the nonsense and corruption, then you need to vote for Betsy Summers. There you go. And the court appearances, uh, Michael, we were in court again uh, this week, and uh, the venue was changed, so we didn't get a chance to get thrown out. Were you wearing your muckraker shirts? Uh, you know, th- these these muckraker shirts are, are catching on. I, I was over in Northern Lights, and I walked in there and looked like a cool, hip kid was there, and he looked at me and... What's this cool I hear? Cool shirt, he said, man. <laughs> What's this I hear that the court wants proper attire now? That, that well, we heard that. I had heard that from one of the lawyers uh, who had said that they have a new sign up. And, and I was not able to confirm that yesterday. So perhaps it's somewhere there. Or maybe they're waiting for us to show up. Uh, but we'll see. All, all, all in good time. Michael, we did launch our, our, our first subscription drive. And we just started that late last night. So folks, you might be seeing stuff land in your box but we will encourage folks to get involved with us and doing what we're doing if you think that what we have done to pa- up, up to this date is of value please get involved i mean if uh, you could continue to subscribe to the times leader or well i won't even say what they're calling some some folks are calling the times leader in wilkesbury or or the citizens voice or, or the scranton times uh, if they haven't been covering the stories or reporting on the stories that uh, you feel as though that uh, they should be reporting on perhaps uh, maybe you want to get involved with us right and and maybe folks haven't had a chance to interact with the Independent Gazette or to see what we're all about. Maybe this is their first encounter with the Gazette. But there will come a time when you need to get your message out, and the Independent Gazette will be there for you. A voice for the voiceless. Exactly. And that's what the Independent Gazette has been all about from the very very beginning, is giving people a platform. And and like I said, there's going to come a time when the average person says, whoa, this can't stand. We have to get... We have to alert people to it, and that's when you need a true community newspaper to help get that message out. And, Michael, I think uh, we have been able to accomplish that, and as I've been saying, we're growing now, and we're getting big enough just to be a little bit dangerous. (laughs) Well, well, we are. You know, I'm just sitting here thinking and pondering about, you know, the citizens' voice and their name, and, you know, I just thought maybe they should change it to the establishment's voice. 
I think they, that would be a more appropriate name. Did they cover the taxpayer rally, by they, the way? They absolutely did not. Did they, they? they didn't respond to our didn't. emails or, or, or anything. Uh, Charlie Urban also tried to contact them. No, no avail. Wow. So they, I mean, nothing. And the, the Times Leader, I do have to give them props. They, they covered us before and after the rally. So right. good job, Times Leader. Okay. Well, in that case, I, I, I think there's some... Probably some of our listeners that are cringing right now, saying, <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Hey, hey, we uh, give but, credit where credit where is credit due. Credit is due, and there you go, Frank. And I think Michael, that's the difference from what we've done. We're not, you know, what we'll jump on. We'll jump on the other media when they need to be jumped on. But nonetheless, when when they we feel as though that they're they're covering stories in a proper manner, mm-hmm. we're going to give them kudos, just like you did now. Talking about kudos, uh, Frank, I think you have to eat a little bit more crow again this Uh-oh, week. Oh, what do we got? Well, the FBI once again. I ever know. Since How you about ju- that? Ever since since you jumped in on that thing. They've been a little bit active down there in Scranton, you know? And Peter J. Smith, for all the folks that were, that were uh, bashing Peter J. Smith, man, man, the indictments were flying out of his office, weren't they? Well, you, Michael, do you remember it was two weeks ago? I believe it was about two weeks ago you took the FBI to task. I did. I, I said, hello, FBI, what are you doing? The, and immediately, is like, <laughs> I no more than got those words out of my mouth, and federal agents were storming two offices of LAG towing, and then one week later, you know, I, I did eat a little crow last week. And, and, and once again yesterday. Yeah, and or then they before, storm but... in and arrest five city officials. How about that? Michael, so that that's what's been happening in Wilkes-Barre. So the, the vigilant work of not only what we've been doing, but other media and, and, and the FBI and the investigations, perhaps now we're starting to uh, pay some dividends. Right. If not for an honest citizen like Mark Robbins standing up and, and saying, no, th- this is wrong, something is wrong here, Without folks like him, this would never have happened. Uh, you, my, you know, Frank, you're absolutely right, and 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 I and it's kind of a little bit of a lead into this custody for cash stories. Uh, you you told me that I wasn't absolutely correct, but I I, I thought we were one of the. Fir- I I remember I was the only one. I was there right. when Mark went into that first court hearing. Yes, and we were just starting. The the Independent Gazette had just started. Uh, we had written stories right from the start, uh, going door to door. Remember, the folks mm-hmm. started coming to us, and and it seemed as though everything really hit the fan somewhere in January, February of of that following year. Right. And uh, and and once again, when we first started even printing those stories, people really didn't believe what we what we were saying. No. They didn't. And, and, and the, certainly Mark Robbins. They didn't believe Mark oh, Robbins. Oh, absolutely not. People thought Mark was nuts from, right from the start. They thought, <laughs> Except you, us. You're out of your mind. You're just upset that you were towed. I, I mean, there was all a litany of excuses. You know, you hate lag because they towed your car. They're, everything. And, you know, and look what's coming out of this. Right. Mark just realized something was wrong when he called the police. And number one, they refused to come. He heard uh, a... Leo, uh, the owner of LAG, radio the police and cancel the call. And then when the, he called back and demanded an officer show up, finally one did show up, pulled up onto the curb, got out of his car, slammed his cruiser door. Mark approached the officer. The officer said, I don't give an F about your car and walked into LAG to get la- uh, right. uh, Leo's side of the story long before the citizen who actually called for help. And then once again, uh, Michael, it's just the behavior. Right. And then the ability to get it out. Mark is pretty dogged. He is. But we had just started the Gazette. We were able to give it a little bit more credence. And, right. and we'll pat ourselves on the back. And, and once again, when we have Bruce Levine on later on in the show here, I think we're going to hear the same story right. about the custody for cash. Once again, somebody that's been dogged, somebody that's been out there for years trying to get a story right. out, you're he, crazy. He took his story to everybody. He, he went to the television stations. He went to the newspapers. Bruce was screaming from the top of the buildings, and, and nobody would listen to this guy, and the Independent Gazette did, and now finally everyone else is recognizing that the Scranton Times has a story and that there's something wrong. There's something wrong. They just Michael, they just had a... A lawsuit filed here locally uh, where CYS is being uh, sued for placing a child with a, a known uh, abuser. Right. So uh. things are starting to break. I could also tell you that a number of informants that have come to us and we're, 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 we're sitting on a number of different stories. All of a sudden, there's other newspapers calling them now. So that's good, and that's what we want. We do want to be, you know, if, if we're, if we're the, the uh, I guess, the fire to, 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 or the spark to get this fire going, 
all all the better because at the end of the day, Michael, what we're really looking for and what we really want is good government and make sure that <clears throat> the media is 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 the watchdog for our community. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we have X on the line. We're gonna we're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about ISIS and uh, some of the worldviews. <clears throat> You're listening to Sanity Check ninety four three FM, the talker. Saturday mornings on 94.3 FM, The Talker. This came, by the way, from a caller to my radio show, Jason from Washington, D.C. He's an insider. He's connected inside Washington. And that's the secret buzz going on inside the building. So listen to the word I say. Jason. The screens all sound the same. From Washington, D.C. Jason. Jason. He's an insider. He's connected inside Washington. And we're back. 94.3 FM, the talk of Sanity Check, Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike. We got Frank in studio. We got Bruce Levine calling in a little bit. We got X on the line. Michael, before I bring X in, there, there was a reason we uh, we played this little intro into X again. Once again, we, we have pointed out that, yes, Jason is from Washington, but uh, connected insider, I'm not so sure. And yet, and yet. This was carried by Fox News, Newsmax, Huffington Post. All of a sudden, when he had talked on a radio show about the firing of the uh, editor at the uh, New York Times. And the reason I bring this up is is that uh, I was up visiting my mom this week and she had Fox News on. And... Uh, kind of subjected to listen to Fox News a little bit longer than I normally do. And there were two things that came up, uh, and, and, and both, both of them had, had to be on the Hannity Show, which is not one of my favorites by any stretch of the imagination. But the first one was had to do with Ferguson, and, and even though they were saying that they were not going to, I guess, you know, uh, report on things or, or try to try the case in the media, they were talking about an anonymous source, anonymous source that had came forward to Fox News and said that the police officer was beaten up. Now, once again... I guess Jason could be an anonymous sauce. He called into a radio show and Fox News carried it once again. And we know and everybody knows and we pay the, play this almost as a parody that he's not a connected insider. And yet all these news sources all of a sudden started reporting on it. I think if we did that, if we reported on anonymous uh, sources, and sometimes I guess we do. But the fact that Fox News is reporting on a source that nobody knows whether it's true or not. And quite honestly, Michael, I'm not sure what's happening in Ferguson. Uh, the one thing I do know is, is that we have to wait and see what the grand jury comes back with. So and then the and the second part of that, that that Hannity thing was all about ISIS. We need to blow up ISIS. And then we had. Uh, I was listening to some general on there, and I'm and and I'm telling my mom, I'm saying, you're listening to the same people that said we had to go into Iraq in the first place and take out Saddam Hussein because he was such a tyrant and his two sons. I remember Hannity harping on this over and over and over again. Are you telling me we did we you know we didn't do the right thing? I'm saying I don't think we did the right thing. I mean, just look at the stability in Iraq. Look at the stability. So now we're listening to the same folks, the same folks that got us into this mess in the first place. Uh, of course, we had some tyrants there that led their, their nations, whether it was Gaddafi or uh, Hussein and, and you have Assad. But you know what? The Christians weren't getting their heads chopped off, and we didn't see all this, this craziness. And now it is, it, it's, it's bedlam. It's bedlam. And yet, we're, uh, are we going to listen? Are we going to let Michael, I, I, I'm going to get X on in a minute, but I have to say this. In 2006, I, I, I ran for Congress in New Jersey, and I remember uh, running a, a, a televised debate with Bill Pascrell, who's a, a longtime Democrat there. And at the time, the Democrats, Hillary, everybody, we're going in. We have to, we have to go get you know, uh, the, 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 the weapons of mass right. destruction. And I, I remember saying, why are we doing this? Why are we sure we're doing the right thing? And are we going to listen to the same folks that gave us the advice before? Are we going to listen to them again? And on that note, good sure, morning. Sure, they can't be wrong twice. <laughs> on that note, good morning, X. 
Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Hey. Hey, we had a great conversation last night, and and one of the things that you brought up is isolationist is North Korea, non-inventionist is Switzerland. Uh, I, I mean, you talked about the freedom of the press with Obama that there is none. You know, where is you know, I, I mean, you, you, there were so many different things that you touched on. So uh, you have the floor. Hey, uh, well, it's interesting. Yeah, the president comes out, and the very first thing he wants is he wants transparency in Ferguson. Now, remember, the president calling for transparency uh, is probably one of the biggest jokes I've ever heard because this is the same president that Jill Abramson, former executive editor of the New York Times, declared in an interview with Al Jazeera. TV, that this is the most secretive administration I've ever dealt with in my entire career. There you go. Okay, so mm-hmm. so now remember, that's the funny part here. The president is now claiming that he wants transparency. Obviously, we're not getting any of that with the Obama administration. Then um, he's going to go send Eric Holder to check things out in <laughs> Ferguson. Now remember, this is the same Eric Holder that even after the tens of billions of dollars of fines that have happened to the big pharmaceutical companies and uh, Banking. large banks, he can't find a single person to put into jail, put on probation, put on house arrest, and they're, they're, the companies are being fined tens of billions of dollars. Right. Uh, you probably will have a greater chance of getting, let's say, put in jail in, in uh, Wilkes-Barre for jaywalking than you do if you go before Eric Holder uh, for laundering Mexican drug cartel money. Right. Um, we go to the next step. Now the president and all these crazies are calling for this ISIS intervention. Okay. And you can already hear how the the verbiage is, is changing. Somehow Obama is now pretending that he cares about a free and open press. This is the same president that a group of journalists have brought uh, concerns about there is a war against the press from this administration. Remember, the Obama has been going after whistleblowers. They're, got, they're, they're tapping the, the press's uh, uh, communication lines. And you're sitting here, and you're like, it's just such a bizarre world, because you, from the, the thought of things, you would actually think this is a constitutional scholar who actually knows what the limitations of the Constitution are. But the reality is he does everything exactly the opposite. And, and people like, I guess, like the Pied Piper, leading people off a cliff. He's not being, you know, most people, unfortunately, don't have the foresight to go, this guy's just flat out lying and doing the exact same thing he's complaining about. One of the things you brought up also is, is you know, who, wh- where did this, uh, you know, with all our intelligence, it, it was like nobody even heard of this ISIS. They're taking over cities of hundreds of thousands, you know, a, a population of hundreds of thousands with 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 it seems like just a few people how is this all happening and 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 what's your take on this well i i I called into uh, speaking to another radio host this past week and i said (laughs) look the the leader of isis is by far the greatest military leader in history because he's been able to somehow take maybe twenty thousand people and take over entire cities mosul has a population of six hundred and sixty thousand people now, remember our own generals, remember when the war began, there was this big debate about we need more boops on the ground and we need all of these troops because there's no way we could possibly occupy an area like this? Right. Well, how are these guys doing it with 20,000 people? Now, remember, they're not 20,000 people, like, in a one-block radius. I mean, these are people that are spread out all over the place. How could you enforce this? And then you take it to the next conclusion, which is, so if they're going to take kids and women and children and crucify people and do all of this stuff, Are the, have the Iraqis suddenly become a gr- bunch of Quakers? Because, you know, my grandmother was a pretty peaceful person, but I think if you were trying to take her grandkids, my grandmother would be taking up arms and defending her family. Right. What's going on in Iraq? And if, if you can't get a group of people to defend their own families from people that are kidnapping and torturing and all of this other stuff that at least is being reported, then you're never going to get them to stand up. And this is kind of the crux that we put ourselves in. It's kind of like a Big Daddy Warbucks bailing the kid out over and over and over again. As long as he knows that the United States will come in and do the dirty work, nobody's going to stand up. So, again, we'll end up in a quagmire here where now we're going to be there forever. And I believe there's a good element within the government, whether it be Republicans or Democrats, that love this idea of being the world's policeman. This is a clear case of you just, if you want to help them, 
send them rifles. Don't send them anything bigger than a rifle because you don't want them to turn around and use missiles or tanks or helicopters against you at some point in the future. And you got to let them fight it out because nobody will say you have to stand up for your own liberty. You know, uh, another thing that you brought up, one of the, I, I, I guess, what you're hearing through the media, are you some kind of an isolationist? Is, is that what you're, you're advocating, isolationist policies? And, that, and that's a great thing. All of those that I would consider in the neocon type of camp, uh, whether it be Republicans and Democrats, because there are in both, and Hillary Clinton is definitely a neocon type of mentality, there's a difference. Constitution advocates what we call a non-interventionist foreign policy. Non-interventionist means you should act like Switzerland. The problem, though, is when you try to make that logical argument in front of these people, what they want to do is try to make it like a radical statement and make it, they use the word isolationist, which is like North Korea. So this is how you know whether the person on TV is actually intellectually genuine with their descriptions. You know, policies that we're describing do not say, close the border, nobody goes in or out, stop trading with everybody, do not do commerce. Nobody's advocating that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but it's kind of like this thing when you talk about marijuana decriminalization, they all immediately jump to things like, you want to make it so grandma can get mainline heroin and crack <laughs> cocaine. You know, it's like they, they, they always go to the exact extreme of what they are to try to scare you into thinking not to go against the positions that they're advocating for. No. And all I know is this. The Constitution says nothing about the United States and ISIS in any way, shape, or form. Zero. And, and, so, and, and when, we, when we look at Switzerland, are they armed? Do they arm them? To, to well, help, and that's that the work? interesting thing. Everyone should know. The Swiss are the most armed population in the world. Now, it doesn't get a lot of coverage because what it would do would be it would undermine a lot of, let's call the anti-Second Amendment crowd's uh, narrative. But in Switzerland, every able-bodied man between the ages, I believe, 20 and 40, keeps a fully automatic battle rifle in their house, in a footlocker, so that in case of an emergency, the entire country of Switzerland, the entire country, can be mobilized in 48 hours. They've actually... In the Swiss Alps, they've created a bunker network that would rival anything that you see in the movies. Now, the thing is, from that position, who is going to mess with Switzerland knowing that they can close the, they can shut off all the roads, all the trains, lock this place down, everybody can go underground, everybody's armed with a machine gun, nobody's going to mess with Switzerland. But it's interesting, you don't see the Swiss running around the world arming jihadists. I mean, it's funny, the ISIS people, I'm telling you, the weapons that they're using are probably some of the weapons that we were giving over in Syria before. There, there, there's no, no doubt about that. I, I, uh, on the way into the studio this morning, I heard that California is just passing more stringent laws on, 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 on getting guns and, and certainly even ammunition. You're going to need a license now to get ammunition. And it seems like we're going backwards and we're not doing the things that we need to do. X, uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have Bruce Levine on the line. But then in, in our final segment, I'd like to talk a little bit more about arming perhaps the Iraqis with guns. Maybe we need uh, another Fast and Furious over there. You listen to 94.3 FM, the talk, a sanity check. Has the political class let you down? Then join Sanity Check as they expose, inform, and enlighten through the new standard in talk radio. Saturday mornings, 94.3 FM, The Talker. Some nights I stay up, cashing in my bad luck. Some nights I call it a draw. Some nights I wish that my lips could build a castle. Some nights I wish they just fall off. But I still wake up, I still see our ghosts, but Lord, I'm still not sure what I stand for. What do I stand for? What do I stand for? Most nights, I don't know anymore. And we're back, 94.3 FM, the talker, sanity check. I know what our next guest stands for, that's for sure. He's been out there for a long period of time fighting the, fighting the good fight. And, uh, Michael, one of the things that we wanted to bring up here uh, uh, before I bring Bruce on the line, I think we lost Michael. We lost Michael somewhere along. I think we're getting tapped into here again. Uh, 
um, Frank, uh, you know, you just never know who's who's listening anymore here. But well, uh, that that Michael, he causes too much trouble. <laughs> he's so. caused too much trouble. Let's get rid of him. Ninety four three FM just has to dump that call. <laughs> there you go. But uh, one of the things, Frank, that I was gonna, uh, I wanted to bring up, and 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 you alluded it to before. Uh, our next guest, Bruce, uh, brought the story to the Independent Gazette. This was about uh, six months ago. And, and in many ways, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the lag towing stuff. And, and folks didn't believe what was going on. They, uh, you know, and, and the more we wrote and the more stuff that we, you know, we brought out and, and more folks that have come forward, once again, it starts adding credence to their stories right. and what's out there and that we need to look into this. And uh, on that note, uh, good morning, Bruce. Do we lose Bruce? No. No, we got Bruce. Bruce, Bruce, we got Bruce. I think we... Uh, we Something's we, uh, going wrong. Here. Yeah, we got... Uh, some, something's amiss. Something's Something amiss. Something is amiss. Do we, got, do we got Michael back on? Who knows? Michael, are you there? I, I am back on. You're back on. Let's see if we can get Bruce back on here. Bruce, we lost Bruce for a moment. Anyway, I'm sure he'll be calling right back in, but uh, certainly one of the things that we're going to talk about with this whole custody for cash, Michael and, and, and Frank and X, and and uh, I'm sure Bruce will get right back in here, is is that... We want to we want to lay out a game plan. You know, summer summer's coming to an end, and we are we're, we're getting together this weekend, and we're we're starting to lay some plans, and we're starting to do some organizing, and and we're saying, okay, how do we make a difference? We just don't want folks just to go willy nilly into the courtrooms, and 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 the, this whole muckraker thing is really starting to take off. So we're we're going to be suggesting a few things, and and certainly one is court watchers. Right. We need to, you know, Mike, I, I forget who it was. Maybe it was uh, uh, Otrowski that had said something at the, uh, at the rally that back in the day, you know, we had these big cavernous courtrooms and, and, and folks from the community would go into the courtrooms to see how justice was administered. And now sometimes so often uh, it, 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 what is put up there and, and how they make you feel, they make you feel uncomfortable and all these other things that, uh, you know, they, it, it, they make it feel uncomfortable that we are watching the courts. So, uh, so, so anyway, let's see if we got Bruce back on. Good morning, Bruce. I think we lost Bruce again. What's going on? <laughs> Something's going on. Something's happening with the... Uh, so uh, so anyway, that's one of the things that we're certainly uh, looking at doing here is is uh, uh, certainly we want to set up the court watchers. Uh, another thing that we're going to be asking now that it is in, uh, you know, uh, election season, uh, Michael, what we want to do is to ask our representatives and folks that are running for representatives and, 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 and for state houses to call for some kind of forums, open open hearings on the courts. Uh, there's something that really has not been done here locally, and I think it's going to shed more light on it. And, and I could tell you right now, uh, even getting some messages from uh, people that are running, they're starting to hear it too. And, it, and it's nice that we've been able to get a message out OK. And as that message is getting out, it's giving more credence. More people are coming forward when some of these candidates are going door to door. They're starting to hear the stories, which makes it even more credible. And then the third thing, of course, is that we certainly want to talk about having recordings and and cameras in the courtrooms. Uh, Bruce, do we got you this time? It looks, still no Bruce. Still no Bruce. You're, it's you're showing just teasing that. people we're with teasing. Bruce. Well, and we're he's... teasing them. Teasing them. That's it. <laughs> His phone's broke or something. Yeah, who knows? And and uh, certainly there might be some kind of problem there, but, the, the whole, but that's okay. The whole point is we just need people to go to court, pay attention, and report back as to what they're seeing. Were, were people treated fairly? Did you see anything that, that didn't seem right to you? And that's the important thing because far too often we're hearing these stories and we heard it during the kids for cash. We're hearing it with custody for cash. Nothing's happening. Don't worry about it. This, right. this, this you, you can't don't, be happening. You don't, need a, yeah, you don't need a lawyer, Lou. You know, Don't worry. The courts will be fair to you. You just go in and tell the truth and all will be fine. And you, you trust that the court system will treat you fairly. And then you get there and, and before you know it, you're being hauled off. Your kids are being taken away, and you don't know what in the world just happened. Michael, one of the uh, places you can go, and uh, it looks like we just have some kind of technical problems here, uh, perhaps, or, or maybe Bruce is having some technical problems. The thing is, is that there is a Facebook page up. It's called Voices. Uh, you could post there, and certainly on the Independent Gazette uh, Facebook page, we could, we could post there. And what we want to do is, once again... 
you know, bring people together and then give them, give them, uh, you know, an outlet to be able to make a real change in what's going on in the courts because the, I, I've, I've been uninformed, Michael, I, and, and I, and you know, as you know, I, I've never really been in, in, involved, certainly with family court in my lifetime, and it's been a whole process, and that's one of the things that I think Bruce wanted to talk about. Let's try him once again. Do we got you, Bruce? Yes, sir. Hey, Good what's going Finally, on? Bruce. I think I think they thought we were uh, were playing some tricks on you there. Good morning. <laughs> How you doing? And thank you, uh, Lou and, and uh, everybody there. I, I appreciate it. Frank, how you doing there? Pretty good, Bruce. How are you? Awesome, awesome. Uh, you know, you caught my attention. I've been listening to the show from the start, and I, I heard somebody say, screaming from the rooftop, I believe it was you, Frank, right? Yes, that's, that, what, I, that's, that's what, what you were doing. doing. You, you were trying to get somebody, anybody, to just listen to what you were saying. Exactly. And, you know, I, I thought of that, and I said, you know, not, and I was labeled a lunatic. Oh, there you well, go. You're well, a muckraker. Most, most people telling the truth are <laughs> lunatics because nobody's listening. You're so frustrated that when you are shouting from the rooftops, people look at you and go, what in the world is wrong with that guy? Correct. And I wanted to, you know, for those that are new to the show, just, just real quick, I want to know, I want them to know what brought me to that point. And what brought me to that point was, first and foremost, the, the powerless feeling, feeling alone after repeatedly being threatened intimidated by people in the court in Lackawanna County. So after that repeated, and this wasn't just once or twice, this was over a two, three year period, being threatened and intimidated, I didn't know what else to do, so I took it to the street corner. Because I already went to the DA, I already went to the FBI, I already went to the commissioners, and nobody did anything. They listened and they placated me. And again, I was labeled the lunatic. And to date, honestly, to date, great job, Levine. You're doing great work with the Facebook page and all. And see ya. And then you're gone. And then again, you're back out there alone. But uh, let me bring this around to really where we're at here. So I started this Facebook group, Voices, uh, approximately nine months ago. And I just put out the truth. Before you know it, there's approximately 1,000 members. Now, granted, not all of those 1,000 members are engaging. The bottom line is we're being watched by individuals. People know they're not alone anymore. Mommies and daddies and grandparents know they're not alone because they know in me and in other like-minded people that are going through a living hell whose lives have been damaged and changed forever, they are not alone. They have a place where they can go, talk to other people, whether it's move, myself, get court watchers, talk to other grandmothers and grandfathers, people that will show up at court, and just give them a little bit of support, enough to move on to the next day. Does that make sense? Uh, Bruce, a, a couple things here real quick. We have a terrible connection, so uh, you know, it's def- definitely going to have you in studio next week if it all, if it all works out. But briefly, uh, uh, before we go to break, what are we doing? You know what we're doing. I know what we're doing. What we're going to do is we're going to get together this weekend. We're going to lay out some a game plan, and we're we're encouraging folks to to get involved with us. If 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 it's if this is a, I guess a subject matter that they they feel strongly about, what are we going to do, and how are we going to give them that that hope? Well, I think uh, the, we're mobilizing others. Can you hear me a little bit better now? A little bit, yes. And the mobilization is critical. So there's a call for action. We're going to go to the, and I've been having talks already with, uh, with the uh, local state representatives, so the Haggertys and the Farinas and the Kavulich and, and Congressman Marino and Senator John Blake. These are people that I've met before. These are people that in the past sort of, uh, not all of them, pushed me away, kept me at arm's length. But no longer is that the case, Lou. So what we're going to be doing is going to them as a group and asking them to speak out now, not in six months, not in two years. Great that you're doing all that work, Senator, or State Representative, but we need action now. And we're not going to ask, Bruce. I think that I'm I'm going to I'm going to jump in here a little bit. We're going to say, listen, you know, you guys are running for office again. Uh, We have some great new faces and we know they're supporting our cause. 
And uh, certainly we have, you know, we talked about the Betsy Summers and the Melanie Madeiras, and, and these folks are, are, the, are the fresh faces on the block. They're not part of the good old boy system. And, yep. uh, and, and the time has come now, Bruce, to start saying, and you've been on this even more so than I have, that <laughs> the time for asking is over. We're not asking too much any longer. I mean, That's we're going right. to be polite. We're going to be professional. But there comes a time, like going into these courtrooms, where we're going to say, we're not taking anymore. We're going to show up. We're going to be there. We're going to watch what you're doing. There is precedent that we can't. We already know there's precedent that we can't trust what's going on in these courtrooms. And you and me and many others out there are saying, and we know that the time has come to put more light on what's going on in these courtrooms and don't use the intimidation of IE gag orders going into special session mm -hmm. moving stuff around and and trying to and and trying to avoid the light that needs to be shed on this go ahead friend if, if they're Correct. doing and, and, and if I may add, you know, uh, so call to action. What could people do out there? They can get in touch with you, the, the, the Wilkes Barre Independent Gazette. They could go to the Voices Group. You can feel free to put my number out there. And we will make sure, because we are a resource center, and we're one of the lone voices out there. So we've, you know, we've taken screaming from the rooftops and being a lunatic to really uh, action-oriented organization, and it's working. And it's working. And I, I, I couldn't help but thank you here publicly, and like we've done, and mommies and daddies, thank you, up and down, man. So it's awesome, awesome work. Oh, Bruce, thanks. Uh, we we need to take a break. Try to hold on for a moment, and uh, we have a we have a bunch of stuff to get caught up on on our final segment. Uh, uh, you listen to Sandy Check ninety four three FM, the Talker. The answer Sandy you're looking Check, for. Saturday like... mornings on ninety four point three FM, the Talker. So wake me up when it's all over. When I'm wiser and I'm older. Wiser and older. <laughs> hey, a little wiser, a little older yesterday. <laughs> 94, 94.3 FM, the talk is Saturday check. We are back, Michael. We're trying to wake him up. And Bruce, I know you've been trying to wake people up. You only got a minute or two. We will get you in studio next week and, and, and expand on this a little bit more. But uh, try to wrap it up in a minute or two for us, my friend Bruce. Well, you know. I, there's so many angles to take, but, you know, you have this short period of time. I am finished. The public is finished with hearing from elected public officials. It's not my jurisdiction. <laughs> Send me an email, and I've done all I can do. Can I repeat that enough out here, people in the local community? How many times have I heard this, not from dozens, Lou, over the last few years, from now into the hundreds. Right. Okay? And while this Danielle Ross is just a face of the public corruption and what's going on in Lackawanna County, people need to know the truth behind the negative impact that these people do to people's lives. And that's what you are exposing. So not only are we exposing, we're out there helping. And again, and it's critical to remember, people that are listening, call, call Lou, reach out, go on to Facebook. There is reason for hope. There's reason for hope now. The movement is strong, yes. and I am on the front lines and have been, along with you, Lou, you are not just a man of, of, of talk. We're on the talker, right? But you're a man of your word. <laughs> Taking it to the streets, man. You've proven it by action, by showing up, not getting paid to show up with a mommy or a grandmother, but to show up because you care, Lou, and you don't want and, to and see our it whole group too. Right. And, and, and I know I'm emphatic. I know I'm compassionate, but that's where it's at, man. We have to stop this stuff. And the DA's office, Lackawanna County DA, and the commissioners, where are you? Where are you? You know what's going on. Mommies and daddies and you, Lou, know that these people have remained silent. They're great at raising money for other causes and showing up and being in the paper for other causes. But what about this abuse that's going on, judicial abuse, People are being impacted. Where are you? Where Lots are you? Silence. And Bruce, what we do want to say too, and as I, I know, uh, I know how many people have contacted the Independent Gazette. 
uh, all of our group here, and I know how many people have contacted you. The one thing we want to let people know is, is, is keep the faith. Bruce, you were at this for five years. You know as well as I do the court systems turn slow. They have the power, but what we're trying to make sure that folks know is is to keep the faith. Just because we're not writing your story right now, we will get to it. We're looking at, we're, Bruce, actually, we're looking at other ways to do this, too. We're looking at maybe through the Muckraker News and start breaking more stories each week as opposed to waiting each month. Go ahead, right. Frank. No, we're, we're inundated, Lou, and the Independent Gazette staff is a completely unpaid staff, <laughs> are I- inundated with stories to write. Right. You know, we, we do not have the manpower or the resources to do it. We need more volunteers to jump in to help you know, people to, to domin- donate time, money, whatever they can to, to help to, the to independent move, to move, move this forward. move this forward. And Bruce, that's what we're doing this weekend. Where you and I and a few other folks are going to start getting together and we're going to lay out that groundwork and lay right. out a structure to say, okay, how do we get these stories broke? Because we can't rely on, on other media. Bruce, I'm going to let you go because we have too much other stuff going on. Thanks so much for uh, uh, doing the work that you've been doing. Keep up the good fight and I'll uh, see you later on this week you betcha all right so x and michael sorry i kept you guys uh you guys uh uh, haven't haven't chimed in at all but uh x let me just get to you real quick i i I wanted to do a little tongue-in-cheek here you mentioned something about uh certainly about uh bring guns to the iraqi folks should we how about fast and furious where's holder on that one i mean maybe we should get holder and the cia to supply the guns to 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 iraq what do you got to say about that x do we lose x <laughs> <laughs> that's it no guns for iraq no guns x for iraq gone. he's gone too man i i gotta tell you michael we got you yet well, I, I'm still here, you know, and I'll answer X's question. You know, one oh. of the things that, and I do look at and respond to what X had said earlier, you know, you, you've got this huge population, and I look at this army, this ISIS army, and they, they're on the back of pickup trucks with some guns mounted to the top of it. Yes. They're, hardly, they're hardly an organized, or at least don't appear to be organized, and yet they're taking over the entire world. And, and that's what really, really has me interested. Are the Iraqis just unwilling to fight for their own freedoms? Well, they, they, again, the the Iraqis haven't been armed. They, they don't have the resources. I'm telling you, give Grandma a shotgun and put her on the right. front porch, and they'll be gone. Yeah. We and, one of the things that I, that we take for granted, I think, Frank and Lou, in, in our nation, is that we can be armed. That is still a choice. You know, are the Iraqi citizens, once again, not allowed, like so many other nations, to carry their own guns? Yeah. Is this part of the problem? You know, and I don't know the laws of Iraq, but I'm going to guess they're not allowed to. You know, and you have guys like Michael Bloomberg who want to uh, continue to have the assault on our ability to carry our weapons. And I think this is the type of culture you end up with. And and I was just, I was just going to bring this up, the, this progressive... You know, the, the, this whole progressive uh, uh, nature in New York, in New Jersey, in California, where they're constantly saying, OK, we, you know, we need to we need to continue to put more and more restrictions on on our Second Amendment uh, rights so that we could, you know, they could protect us. Right. Well, it, it, we keep looking at and Michael, one of the things that I, I do want to bring up. And certainly, and certainly, uh, you know, it's it's something that once again we have to look at. Where did this ISIS come from? That's for one. And I want to go back when we could even look at where are all these kids crossing the border. First of all, I haven't heard anything. Did that stop? Did the border crossing stop? Did they just have that one big wave? Of it was just a busload. Fifty thousand people all of a sudden. Fifty thousand kids that nobody knew was coming over that walked from Colombia two thousand miles through all these things. Where, what happened to them, Michael? I mean, this is what we keep bringing up, and and and, and I don't know why other media we're not we're not there yet. But are, are these legitimate questions? They are. You know, you look at so many things. What, what happened to those? Folks, what happened to Sergeant Bergdahl? What happened to this? It, it, it's all we have such a short attention span in this nation. And we just go on from one crisis to the next, and yet no, none of the previous crises are ever resolved. You know, so, so these are all valid questions. You know, it, it, yeah, I almost feel that at some point in time, I myself am going to have to take a ride to the border to find out if any of this stuff is being resolved. And, and you know, Lou, from where I'm at, it's not that far of a trip to the border. And, and Michael, so, can you take a camera? Because I'd like some photos of all these kids coming across. Something to document. Maybe we'll do a story on this for the Gazette. But 
I mean, you know, my friend James O'Keefe did that. I, I think we mentioned this last week where he crossed the border as Osama bin Laden. He dressed himself yeah. up. Uh, the video is out there. Folks, you could look that up. He dressed himself up as Osama bin Laden, walked across the border. Evidently, the border guards are 10 miles in. Interstate 10, Michael, which you are aware of, goes, you know, yep. major interstate running right through Houston. That's six miles in. So mm -hmm. before they even get to the border guards, they get hop on a bus or a hitch a ride down to Houston or wherever else they're going. Sure. And, and you know, it's, and one of the things, too, Lou, besides just coming over across the border, it's, in my opinion, it's an attempt to really change our culture on, on so many levels. You know, you, you look at, you know, in... In English, things that have to be printed in English and underneath that Spanish, but but it doesn't work the same way, Lou. You know, we have situations here where things are in Spanish, but there's nothing in English. I think so. so it's a it's a double standard, Lou, and I think I, I perceive it as a real attempt to change your culture, and, and I don't know how anybody else could see it any other way. Uh, I think we got X back, and I want to get his unique perspective on perhaps maybe how we could have Eric Holder and the CIA provide arms to the Iraqi folks. X, do we got you back? Hey, you know, the interesting thing about this is arming them is extremely cheap if you're just giving them rifles and ammunition. Anything above that, you know, for the price of one, like, missile or something like that, you can buy, like, a thousand rifles. Right. So you never notice the thing is they never go with what the cheap and best option is. They always want to equip them with all of these crazy goodies. <laughs> um, but again, you know, this is the re all I know is Ferguson to me has been the greatest Second Amendment commercial I've ever seen because if you call 911, you can be assured that the police are not going to show up. And the only people's stores that aren't getting looted and so forth are those standing in front of them with their own rifles protecting their own property. And, you know, and really, X, I think that's a great point, that it's an empowerment to the individual to be able to defend their own property and their own families. And maybe that's part of the answer, X. Maybe that's why they're using the missiles instead of the guns. They don't really want the Iraqis to know what true freedom is, because then the fact that they might start thinking for themselves. And, and that would be a huge danger to all the great corrupt political leaders that we have in our nation and all over the world. And the taste of freedom is really hard to get rid of once you have it. Don't you remember, Michael, they had freedom. Remember they showed all the pictures. 30, 30 different parties were on the ballot. Of course, we can't yeah. get we can't get more than two on the ballot here without <laughs> yeah, going through. Not. But you know, but what what has happened there? And I think I, I think we're just raising the right questions about what's going on. Certainly, throughout this program, we're, we're saying a couple things: get involved, do stuff. I mean, you know, we have the court stuff locally, but then we're also raising the questions. I, I think legitimate questions of you know where where did this ISIS come from? Who are they? What happened to all these boatloads of kids that are crossing the border? Where did they come from? Who's behind all? this and i think those are all legitimate D questions yeah, don't don't just sit on the sidelines and say boy this isn't right someone should do something about this that someone is you the time is now and look for that subscription in the uh in in your email box it's coming or go to the facebook page if you want to get involved with the gazette michael we're down to it buddy uh you got it we're down to the last 30 seconds the fastest hour in radio is now done michael you got it bud god bless all god bless everybody see you next week